this might be one of the best horns I've played. Check it out. Hi everybody, my name is Andrew King and we are here at Alamo Music in beautiful downtown San Antonio. Don't forget to hit the like button and if you could, visit us at alamomusic.com where I have this saxophone and many more available just for your perusing. Uh, today we are going to be looking at the magnificent Buffet 400 series. In particular, we're looking at their tenor saxophone. That tenor saxophone is going to be in the matte finish. Uh, this beautiful antique-like finish. Um, I really enjoy this horn. We're going to go straight into it. Um, one of the things that you're going to notice the most about the saxophone is compared to a lot of others is that it's going to be pretty heavy. Um, while most saxophones and tenor saxophones, especially from the vintage era, are going to be much more on the lighter side, even the more modern ones that are being made today are going to be very light, uh, you know, for resonance and whatnot. This one's going to have a lot of sturdiness to it, and it's going to be a very high quality, uh, low end on, on that front. Um, throughout the horn, the intonation is fantastic because of that heavy setness, and that's something I'm personally a fan of. I've been playing on a Yanagasawa for most of my life. You get a lot of the resonance on that low end, that, that richness that you want out of the tenor, and that does carry up to the high end as well. Um, while it doesn't speak as well on the high end for a lot of that, that also has a lot to do with that really set in um, very heavy brass. Um, the other big thing about it that I'm going to notice is that uh, that I did notice while playing it is going to be a lot of the, the poster rib construction. Uh, the keys are in very good places as well. So when you play up and down the horn, it does really, the ergonomics of it feel fantastic. Um, if I were to say any small complaints, uh, I think the high F key on the palm is a little too uh, low in. It kind of reminds me of those older horns. Uh, in that fact, but in that case, the rest of it feels great, especially the G sharp table and the low C and E flat for my hands in particular, those really did feel good. Um, the other thing is when you play down on the low end, uh, as far as the intonation goes, it was awesome. I was able to get a beautiful subtone, so you kind of get that nice free blowing nature out of it. Uh, and combining that with the heavy setness of the instrument itself, it really is just a blow and play. It really does, it responds so well to anything you ask it to do, especially on that low end. Um, it's personally one of my favorite horns that have come through here. Uh, the Buffet 400 does come in two sets. It comes in either the matte finish, which is the one we're going to show you today, or it's going to come in a gold lacquer. Um, the lacquers aren't going to make too much of a difference, uh, but uh, the aesthetics on the matte finish are personally my favorite. It looks very beautiful. While the gold lacquer does have that kind of more modern gold look, um, I mean, I'm definitely more of a fan of the matte finish. Uh, the tenor saxophone in particular plays great. I haven't played on the alto yet, so watch out for that video. There might be some differences there. Um, but also, aesthetic-wise, uh, the tenor does come with that very nice matte finish. The pearl keys also look very good as well, so the aesthetics really match. So I'm very much a fan of that. Um, as far as anything else with the horn goes, it is a made in China instrument and there's like three stickers all the way down into it just to tell you over and over again, but it's very well made. The construction on it, it might be one of my favorite made in China horns that I've played and that really shows because of Buffet Crumpon's very good uh, credibility, their legacy. Uh, this instrument is very well made. All of the etchings on the instrument, the beautiful little uh, floral markings and whatnot, all of those are hand done by a technician uh, from Buffet. So there is a good amount of love and uh, passion put in this horn. You can really tell uh, throughout whoever was designed this and whatnot and the, the ability to make it at such a good uh, level, very well done. This is going to be an entry pro level instrument in my opinion. Uh, the instrument prices in around four to forty five hundred dollars. This is early 2024 at the time of filming. Uh, the instrument it's pretty well priced for what it does. I do think that if you do find it at a local music store you can probably get a good price on it even brand new. Just ask around. Uh, the instrument plays very well for what it does. Um, and so I do recommend it to anybody wanting to get like a really good, say if you're in college and you're looking to get a good tenor on the side, 
uh, while you're still playing on alto for most of that, it works very well. Uh, in that fact, jazz or classical, this instrument does perform on both ends, in my opinion, especially on the jazz side. Because you got that heavy richness in the sound, that depth that you want, it does give it a lot of character that pushes it forward. Um, that character is basically that free-blowing nature. It gives you a lot. Uh, the harder you blow on it, it doesn't splat against the wall or anything. It doesn't spread the sound. It's just full force the whole time, and it plays great. Um, so let me know what you think. I'm going to play it for you real quick. Uh, we'll see how it does, and then uh, we'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the horn plays great uh, the whole way down, especially on the, the bottom end. Like, I really like the subtone effect that happens on the bottom end. Um, it, you can give it a lot of weight, and it doesn't really get in the way. Uh, and sometimes you get like kind of that stuffy effect. And that's something I usually expect from kind of like, like more French instruments, um, especially on the low end. But... With this one, dude, that low end, it really does remind me of those like really good Yanagisawas. 
uh, from back in the 90s and the early 2000s before they did the TW series. Um, and this instrument is it's just solid. It's just a solid instrument. And it's kind of what you want from a good tenor, um, especially at this price point, right? Because the, the whole thing with these entry-level pro instruments and everything, it's, it's basically you're either in college or you're going off to go gig and stuff like that. And you want a good road horn. Um, and you're not one like spend, you know, like that $8,000, $9,000 on one of those huge horns. Um, but this one plays with the best. It plays great. Harmonics up and down are great. Um, I really enjoyed playing it up and down, so I can't recommend it enough. Um, well, either way, please don't forget to leave a like. Uh, that really does help us in the long run. It helps us get these really cool instruments in for sure, because the more interest we get in these videos, the better that the reviews come out. Um, and then also, uh, if you can visit us at alamomusic.com, we do have this saxophone available, but feel free to give me a call at our phone number. Uh, it should be listed below. We would be more than happy to help you with that. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.